Good afternoon. Welcome to another episode of Logan's Devotions. It's great to be together. Wonderful to open up God's Word for another day and see what he has to say. We're turning through to Luke chapter 6 again, but before I read that again, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word, which is rich and true. We pray that as we turn to it, that you would encourage our hearts and bless us to see wonderful things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Luke chapter 6, picking up at verse 20. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you shall be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you and revile you and spurn your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day, and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven, for so their fathers did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you shall be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe to you when all people speak well of you, for so their fathers did to the false prophets. Well, often in life, there's always a good question to be asked when you're making a trade or an exchange. You often think to yourself, is it worth it? You know, you might think about not just financially going and buying something, but if you're trading something. As a child, there used to be these trading card games, and you would get cards, and then you might have a double up, or you might have one that's really good quality, and you would trade it with someone else, and you might be able to trade your really good card for two or three cards from a friend. Well, in this passage here, we're thinking about exchanging. We're thinking about who is blessed and who is cursed, who receives blessed and who receives woe in the kingdom of God. And it's not quite what we would think, humanly speaking. If I was to ask you, who are the blessed in this world? Most people would say the rich, the full, the laughing, and those that are spoken well of. But not so in the kingdom of God. Everything is reversed, isn't it? Jesus says, woe to the rich, woe to the full, woe to those who laugh, woe to those who are spoken well of. But he says, blessed are those who are poor, blessed are those who are hungry, blessed are those who are weep, blessed are those who are hated. Why? What is going on here? Why is it that in the kingdom of God, everything seems to be reversed? Well, it all has to do with what's been exchanged. Those in the kingdom of God that receive woe have made an exchange. They have exchanged the glory of God for richness, the grace of God for being full, the peace of God for laughter, and the smile of God for being spoken well of. However, those who have been blessed have the opposite. You see, those people of this world that have rejected being rich, full, laughter, and being praised, have exchanged all of those things for being poor, hungry, weeping, and persecution. Why? Not because they've exchanged those things for those things, but because they've exchanged the blessing of this world for the blessing of having Christ. It's like coming with the expensive card and receiving two or three other cards. We have come with all the blessing of this life, all the blessing of this world, all of the good things that this world offers, and we've laid them down and we've said these things are worth nothing in comparison to knowing Christ. 
It's like the Apostle Paul, right? In Philippians, he says, I count all things as rubbish compared to knowing Christ and his resurrection. And he will forsake all things, leave them all behind and pursue knowing Jesus Christ and him crucified. Why? Because in Christ is the true blessing found. And so Jesus looks at his disciples that have given up everything to follow him, that have taken up their cross to follow him, and he says, you are the blessed ones, though you weep now. You are the blessed ones, though you hunger now, though you're poor now, though you're hated now, because you've received me. Hence why he says, Yours is the kingdom. You shall be satisfied. You shall laugh. Your reward in heaven is great. What have these men done? These men have set their eyes above. They have done Colossians 3 verse 1 to 4. Set your mind above on heavenly things. They have sought first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And those who do that will never be disappointed. Because as Jesus promises elsewhere, anyone who gives up father or mother or house or career for my name and the kingdom will receive 100-fold more in this life and in the life to come with persecutions. And you know, at the end of the day, that's a trade worth making every day of the week, isn't it? I mean... What do you gain if you gain the whole world and yet lose your soul, right? It's about weighing out what truly matters. You can have riches, fullness, laughter, the praise of men. But at the end of the day, when you're old, decrepit and then dead, it's going to count for nothing. But for those who have embraced the kingdom, they will never, in eternity, ever regret that trade. And so I guess the question for all of us is, what trade are we making? Are we clinging to this world and its joys? Or will we cling to Christ and receive all the blessings that are found in him? Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you that there is riches in Christ which far surpass this world. And we pray that you would help us to trade everything to have Christ. That like the rich young ruler, we would not go away, sorry, unlike him, we wouldn't go away sad, but we would receive Christ with joy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.